All over our cities, along our coastlines and across our green and pleasant land, an invisible army is fighting a never-ending war. Their enemy is the filth that we create and the vermin that thrive on it. Welcome to the hidden world of the Grime Fighters. On Grime Fighters tonight, an old schoolhouse that could become a death trap. Chlorine gas would render you unconscious straight away. A rootle in some rubbish produces rapid results. This is evidence we've just found belonging to the property. And a bloodstained police van gets a workover from Grime Fighter Ben. Occasionally you get like a stubborn bit. But first, in Grimsby, it's back to school with a difference. This Victorian institution has seen happier days. And for the sheriff, John Waite, it's not exactly a school reunion. Originally, it was a, a boys' school. John Hurt, the actor, attended the school at some time during his um, earlier years. The school children have long since gone. Now it's become a home for squatters and a fire risk. The fire service, who will be down shortly, uh, want to be sure that this building and the main building is clear of any rubbish or flammable material. It's been boarded up to keep people out, but that's just an inconvenience for John and his team. Ready, steady, go. I shall be much happier once we know what's actually in the building. Yeah. This has been the scene of a fire in uh, recent times. Uh, you can see the uh, charred results. John immediately identifies a fire risk. The sort of thing we're looking to get rid of today are these settees. Now, I doubt very much if either of these pieces of furniture comply with any current fire regulations. Now, just one of these on their own would cause so much in the way of toxic fumes, it would be impossible to come in here without breathing apparatus. There are signs that squatters have been here. Pretty messy through here. This was actually an area that people were living in until quite recently. I think they liked uh, a lot of oil in their, in their cooking. Not very healthy. That's the problem with buildings like this. They attract people like uh, magnets. It looks like the squatters have gone, but then John goes upstairs. Clearly somebody is in residence. There's no electricity here, no water now. Um, it's uh, cold enough as we're stood in here now, so what it must be like at night, I just don't know. John pieces together the clues. Certainly looking at the dates on the magazines and bits and pieces, it is within recent days that someone's been here. We even put a little plaque up on the wall. It's obvious that the squatter doesn't get out much. They've also got a, a very uh, vivid imagination. We've got a video, remote control, but unfortunately no TV, just a picture or a cutout of a TV stuck to the wall. An imaginary TV and, it seems, an imaginary toilet. The toilet's non-existent, so we have found the... Um, it's as if it's like a, a regulatory requirement to have a bottle of urine in places like this. It's actually quite tidy in here, but um, so whoever this um, person is, is... Um, at least they're trying to look after themselves. Sadly, all the squatter's inventiveness turns out to be wasted. John's told us what needs to be removed, and uh, we'll get in there and remove it all. Blood and crime often go together, but who cleans up afterwards? Ben Giles, a businessman turned grime fighter, saw a gap in the market and he became an expert in crime scene cleaning. Down in um, Halford West, in uh, West Wales, so there's, um, we do a lot of work from here, do all their police cells and their vehicles when they're contaminated. Uh, today we've got a police vehicle that uh, someone's obviously been arrested in and there's blood in the back of the vehicle. We're just going to clean out the blood, sanitise it, so they can get it back on the fleet and use it again. This is our old friend, the deep clean, but it starts from the outside. Open the doors, again, exactly the same here, just where people have had their hands. Ben's task is to return the vehicle to its pristine state. He's meticulous. So again here, now the prisoner's been in here, so we can see 
Obviously we've got blood spatters and we've got people have been standing in it. Ben doesn't know how or why the blood got here. It's wise to assume the worst. If we try to ask whether the person had any bloodborne pathogen like hepatitis or HIV or MRSA, they wouldn't tell us anyway because the data protection. So you just treat everything as if it's a worst case scenario. But that's why we use that disinfectant. It's mainly to protect us, not only to sanitize the, the cell in the back of the vehicle. Again, exactly the same technique, just spray down. Ben's using 429, an industrial strength disinfectant which kills HIV, hepatitis, E. coli, MRSA and swine flu. Just want to work our way in so we know that everything in front of us is nice and clean. Occasionally you get like a stubborn bit. Nowadays everyone is much more aware of the potential dangers and Ben fully accepts the responsibilities of his job. If now another prisoner was to come in here and it turns out that the prisoner of the day before had something like hepatitis B and someone else got in here with cuts and abrasions and they were to contract hepatitis B, it would be our fault. I'll respray all of this just to make sure I've sanitized it all correctly because if we put anything that's hazardous into waste, it can't go into landfill. One last wipe and the van looks spotless. But for Ben, looking spotless isn't enough. We use this machine here, which is called an ATP machine. It's quite simple, really. You snap the top of the swab stick. We then take the swab stick out. We just take a simple area that we've cleaned to pick up what readings we can on it. Then we put that back in its case. Open up the ATP machine. Press OK. The um, light reading has come back as zero, so it's given us a tick, it's a pass, so we know we've cleaned all the bacteria from that surface. There's more of this kind of work than Ben alone can handle, and he's now set up a training academy for cleaning crime scenes. In Grimsby, Darren and his team are clearing a path from the squatter's digs to the rubbish lorry. Obviously some of these are uh, living here and uh, there's definitely signs of it. Presumably they've been here for a while and I'm not quite sure. Um, it's a shame but he's got to go. It may seem harsh, but squatters' rights are in practice quite limited. Darren is impressed by what the squatter has achieved. Could you get a living room, bedroom and kitchen in this area? I think he's done well. It's the end for someone's home. For the grime fighters, the work isn't so much about people it's the variety they like. I think there's a something different every day kind of thing, job. Just what I need for my sandwiches. Hey. It's empty. Ticking paste. Crime fighters have different skills. Like when you give Sean the sledgehammer, get the door open, help the light, he'll just get straight in there. The squat is no longer a squat, and Darren intends to keep it that way. Just get it boarded up, get it secure and just uh, make sure nobody can get in. Since Ben opened his Academy of Crime Scene Cleaners, he hasn't looked back. The demand for these skills is big and getting bigger. But crime scene cleaning is not every grime fighter's dream. It can be unpleasant. It can be dangerous. It can be difficult. We teach them how to proactively pick up work in their area from cleaning up police cells, police vehicles, hypodermic needle collection, body fluids, blood, feces, urine, vomit, depending on what they're going to come across. And today's class is about the grim business of grime fighting at the sharp end. First, what's the correct way to tackle infected needles? As a situation where there's been vagrants and they've come into the property and they've got no regard for the property or themselves and so there will be uh, needles all over the place. What's your method for this now? Sanitise as you disinfect as you go. Yeah. So as you're constantly working into an area and you're not missing anything. Okay, so you know the, the technique that you need to follow. And blood. There's always an awful lot of blood. It's tricky stuff. 
this scenario here, there's obviously been blood loss. It could be anything to a murder, it could be down to a suicide, it could be down to just someone hemorrhaging. So, your method? The main principle is we'll cut out and remove anything we can right. after sanitising it. After sanitising it, yeah. The problem about blood is that it's hard to get rid of. It gets everywhere. Now, before that goes into there, OK, what would you also need to sanitise on it? The yeah, the back of it. If you're unsure that you can, you can sanitise it, it's got to be yellow backed, OK? The methods may look simple enough, but it's easy to make mistakes. OK, by moving it, you slightly tipped it. And it's gone on the floor, OK? So we've now cross-contaminated another, another area. OK, so now what would you do now? Sanitise. Sanitise it. The expert crime scene cleaner is determined. It's all about attention to detail. If you're not taught how to do it properly and systematically, right from the start, you're then creating a risk for yourself and the population. Have you had a brief look at floor number two? Can we try the powder as well on that? Go around the edge first to stop it spreading anywhere else. Okay. The gel solidifies liquids that have spilt, including blood, and draws the fluids out of materials. Just move it to one side if we can. But it must be handled with great care. I don't know whether everyone can, can see, but what's happened with the grout at the back? Stain. It's stained. Was it stained before? No. No, so we've actually spread a stain. If you spread staining about. You're just going to create more work for yourself. No, it's not dangerous, so you can... Around 120 students will finish training this year and they should be ready for the workplace. As soon as they've completed the, um, the course, we can then um, safely pass work on to them and they can pick up their own work as well. One way or another. Coming up, when the fire brigade arrives at the Grimsby School, there's unwelcome news. We all know the dangers of asbestos. There's daring do in Dagenham when the lads find a bin full of problems. What's that sick? And it's a case for the Ladies Detective Agency. The employer tipping is a serious issue in this borough. Up and down the land, a little-known army of dedicated professionals are devoted to battling an ever-advancing tide of grime. Back at the old Grimsby School, the sheriff has brought the fire brigade to help assess the safety risk. This was once a swimming pool. Now it's a health hazard. There's a typical example of a risk. If this is totally smoke-locked in this area, then as you can exactly you can just see down there, it's full of water. The risk for us there straight away is falling down them stairs, stepping through that doorway. There's a good sign for us anyway, warning us what's in there. Chlorine gas would render you unconscious straight away. And a lift shaft is revealed as a potential danger. A lot of these things, as you can see, they're all busted. Right, it doesn't really tell you what's in them. Um, but for example, there, straight away, just me seeing that, that's got an X on it and an orange yeah. band round it, and that actually says irritant on it. Yeah. So that's obviously a problem. There's worse to come when a very real hazard is exposed. It's obviously part of the ceiling now, a lot of old buildings tend to have um, bits of asbestos. Obviously, we all know the dangers of asbestos. Um, it's another hazard that uh, obviously we need to be aware of. Asbestos can cause a chronic and often fatal lung disease. It's just worrying to think how many people have been exposed to it in the building over the years. Asbestos is falling from the ceiling, and Fire Officer Nigel Smith is worried about the structure of the building. As an officer in charge for me, I would be more than reluctant to send anybody on that first floor. Just looking at the condition, them how they've, they're rotten, they've bowed, they're all dipping. There is a danger of arson. If this happens, and the building catches fire, Nigel will at least know the layout. Immediately if you have a look there, that floor's gone. See how the floor dips? And that's directly under where we was. I wouldn't commit anybody into this area at all. That wouldn't sustain a lot of weight before you'd go down there. Anyway, just mind this pigeon. This is all pigeon feces. It's not even a place for pigeons. Because all the roofs are open, 
pigeons are going to come in, and that's where they can. These will be youngsters, I, I would imagine, that haven't been able to get out. There's more work here than John's extreme clean team can handle today. They'll be back tomorrow, and in the meantime, they want to make the place safe. In the next few days, all of this boarding will be replaced by steel sheeting. Um, and uh, that'll prove much more um, effective as a deterrent to anyone trying to get into the building. John hopes these measures will be enough to deter any possible squatters. In Dagnum, the war against fly tipping continues. It's a never ending story. Street wardens Lorraine and Eileen know the score. If they can find a culprit, they have the power to issue a fine. Right, a good one. Yeah. So, well, as you can see, we've come across a fly tip in the council alley, which we're going to search to see if we find any evidence. A quick rummage soon proves rewarding. This is domestic, yeah. But the evidence is conflicting. It's a completely different area. That's strange. They have to dig deep to solve the mystery. So that tried right because it's all yeah, it comes from that shop. Lorraine has discovered the origin of some of the rubbish. There must be at least 20 receipts in the bottom there. Before I'd even got that far, I realised what shop it had actually come from because some of the label on, on the boxes. Rest in this one, look. Like. This is evidence we've just found belonging to the property that is outside. With the fly. It's come from a nearby shop. The official procedure now gets underway. Proof is required. We have to take a photo in situ, so it has to be with the fly tip. When we find trade waste, um, we then go into the shop where we think it's come from and uh, check if they have a trade waste agreement. Sounds a bit serious, but then fly tipping is a serious issue in this borough. It looks like an open and shut case. Eileen and Lorraine pay a visit to the shop. Another two Dagenham Street wardens are responding to a distress call nearby. Rob and Rob are on the trail. Oh, the bins haven't been collected for a little while, so just come and have a look. Um, yeah, they are quite bad, so we're going to get them taken away. Smell a bit fishy. While Rob visits the resident who complained, the other Rob tries to solve the problem. This might have been a miscollection um, for whatever reason. Um, no idea, really. They just went there, drove away, which was the same. It was when I rang up. It just goes on and on. It seems the bins in this block have been missed off in the rounds. So I'll speak to the cleansing crews and the managers. Um, I'm trying to get it traced up here, but they're going to be cleared now. Rob will ensure the bin men will be back next week. There's six weeks worth of waste down there. It's starting to kick up and it's starting to smell. Part of my job now is I'll go back and speak to the managers that are responsible for this, make them aware that the bin crews are leaving them for six weeks. But there's a food spillage that can't be ignored. Oh, Time for an expert analysis. No, I'm not going to do the um, taste test, so I'd, I'd say it was some kind of food, but I would not say what. Yet again, Rob and Rob ride to the rescue. Smells well, gone. Job done. Lovely. Okay, never mind. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Meanwhile, Eileen and Lorraine are on the fly tipper's trail. They don't have to walk far to find a suspect. Every business in the mm -hmm. borough has a duty of care mm -hmm. to get rid of their trade waste. The owner is quick to make excuses. Yes, but we, we have, have no container because in last three the months, three containers is a stalling. Right, so that's you why, the Euro bin then? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that's why we are waiting for another new, new one. But when it's come, we don't know. Mm -hmm. I need to see your trade waste agreement. Mm -hmm. I do need to see the agreement. The owner can't provide the relevant documents. This one actually ran out actually, on the 1st of March. Have you another one? It seems the owner's waste permission has expired. If you can actually find mm -hmm. the new agreement, then we'll come back and check tomorrow. All right, see if you find that. And we'll sort out another okay. Euro bin. If you have another contract, yeah. if you don't have another contract, we would have to arrange for one. Sure one. Sure. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. You have to 
handle it like that. It's no good going in heavy handed, as you can see. It wouldn't have helped. But hopefully when we come back tomorrow, she will have a trade waste agreement in place. The lady did say that she has got another one somewhere, but whether she's telling us the truth or not, we don't know, but we'll find out when we get back to the office. So. The clean team arrives in the alley. Their mission is not impossible and the mood lightens. They never know what they may find on a job like this. Mind you, it ain't the first time we was called out before and there was all rotten fish down here. Today, it's the contents of a kitchen. Yeah, we can have Chinese man. Chinese, we can have with him. Look, we've got the cook. And his one. <laughs> but for crime fighters, where there's rubbish, there's reward. Keeps me in a job, doesn't it? <laughs> photos, photos. Everyone takes photos nowadays. I know where you're going to pin them. You're going to pin them in your office, yeah, isn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you do. The lads have done their bit, and the ladies look to the future. Right, that's it now. Job done. Bit of lunch, and then out again before it gets too dark. Since filming the show, the Dagenham shop owner has a license and now has brand new bins. The asbestos and chemicals have been safely removed from the Victorian school and the building has been cleared. And at crime scenes up and down the land, the class of 2009 are wiping the slate clean. <laughs>